Hello everybody, Dick Coughlin here with another uh, article by Henry Maycow following on from the previous one called Why All Porn is Gay. This one has certain themes and uh, narratives from the, from that article that may seem to, uh, you know, that seem to sort of uh, come from the same uh, sort of uh, mindset and uh, talking the same amount of bollocks. So I thought we would read that one now. Uh, this one's called Confessions of a Recovering Sex Addict. Now this is Henry Maycow referring to himself as the sex addict, but he's not, really, he's not. He, what you will find is what he's talking about is just general normal stuff that everybody goes through, really. And, um, but yeah, so, um, the Illuminati... This is a brilliant, this is his starting point. The Illuminati hooked boomers on porn to destroy marriage and the family. Now, Henry, you do know why boomers are called boomers, don't you? You know what that's short for, isn't it? Like, it's short for baby boomers. Because they were the generation at which, after the war, there was a big Boom! It was an explosion of children. So if that was the goal of pornography, it kind of completely failed in every possible way. I don't know. In the rear view mirror, it's now clear. Can you just say looking back or in hindsight? in the rear view mirror. It's now clear that porn is used as a form of political and spiritual seduction. Well, also, physical seduction as well. But not spiritual or, or political, really. I mean, politics of porn is quite simple, you know, if there are any. I doubt if women were always seen as sex objects. You're right, men never looked at women and wanted... What you're saying is, yeah. You know, what you're saying is you think that you know before Playboy before Playboy came along women were never sexy. They were all rippers, all of them. Pork scratchings glued to a welder's bench in a frock the way we liked it. They had to sexualize women. Yes, they had to. We had to take women and make them look nice. Before that, no wanking. Are you mental? I mean, what planet do you live on? Women were not sexualized before porn. Playboy was presented as advanced thinking. It really wasn't, mate. I mean, it, it's the furthest away. It is the most basic, simplistic thinking you can get. Here's a lovely lady with her boobies out. Oh, look, I've got an erection. That's the end. <laughs> with, me with messianic fervor, Playboy took its message of sexual freedom to the American male, who, you know, other people were masturbating too, right? Who, in the 1950s and 1960s, still consecrated sex for, ma for marriage. All right. But the freedom was illusory. Playboy's aim was to undermine marriage and hook men on sex for its own sake. Yes, men never enjoyed sex. We couldn't, we just couldn't get around it. No, it was impossible. And it was all Playboy's fault. To do this, they had to prevent them from finding true satisfaction in marriage. In Judith Reisman's words... Playboy was the first national magazine to exploit college men's fears of women and family commitment. No, it wasn't. I hate to break it to you. It just brought out into the open what has always gone on. But after 20 years of marriage, he's 71 when he wrote this, by the way. After 20 years of marriage, I know that the most reliable and satisfying venue for sex is marriage. Okay, no, fair play. Outside, I'm sure at 71, it's you're well satisfied. Outside of a committed relationship, sex is just masturbation. Yeah, go tell that to those incels who keep shooting people, will you? 
at the age, at at age eleven in nineteen sixty one, magazine pictures of of women showing cleavage or leg, ooh, had a magical quality for me. Yeah, they tend to, mate. Yeah, see, that's normal, mate. Pretty soon, my friends were stealing Playboy from newsstands. I was also tempted. With some trepidation, I approached my father. In the spirit of the times, sex is natural, repression is bad. Are you disputing either of those two claims? In the spirit of the times, he bought me a copy. Your dad bought you a copy of Playboy when you were 11 years old. Pretty soon, I was a subscriber. You subscribed to Playboy. When you were 11, you could afford a subscription. I was a subscriber in more ways than one. I'm, I'm sorry, there's only one way you can be a subscriber to Playboy. You do know this was your dad doing this, right? This was so... This was, You gave your dad an excuse to subscribe to Playboy. You were the fall guy. If, if his missus ever found out. My th father's decision vastly increased my trust and confidence in him. But sex became a surrogate religion. Everything has to be a, it's a, something more complex than it is, isn't it? It was something sacred that took place between angelic creatures in secluded garrets. Fuck off, you big puff. <laughs> this is the reason... This is the reason so many men, especially prominent Jews, what, have fallen victim to me too? Yes, men, what are you saying? So you're saying Playboy is... Playboy is responsible for... Before... Men never ever were in any way inappropriate or assaulted women at all that is that noise is the wind sorry women who were not who were not beautiful became invisible i could not take them seriously my first wife was plain looking i hope she's reading this she's going to feel well pleased with she's going to feel well happy with herself isn't she she had spoken to me twice before we became neighbors at the university library but you lived in a library. I had absolutely no recollection. Well, this was a relationship bound to last, wasn't it? Why, why are you with her? Well, I mean, look at her. She's not much. And uh, apparently I've spoken to her. So the fixation on physical beauty was psychologically emasculating. How do I approach someone who, I, when I was mesmerised by their beauty, attractive women remained mystical goddesses. I put them on a pedestal. You never put the pussy on a pedestal. I was too needy. I couldn't see women as vulnerable human beings. Oh, you need them to be vulnerable, do you? I, I lost touch with my feelings and, cru and critical faculties. I wanted to love, but didn't know how to get it. Boy, that sounds like literally every teenage boy ever in history, right? I was part of the homosexual revolution, part of a generation of sexual fashion victims. Despite the example of my, uh, despite the example of my father, I didn't grasp the eternal model of masculinity. A man's backbone is his work, my dad said. He leads, he, he leads and looks after the woman. Can I remind you, it was your dad who bought you this bloody magazine that ruined your life. Do you not think he was looking at it? If he bought, he got it for you. So what's your excuse? Was he like, no, I don't feel like looking at Playboy, the snooker's on. I married the average looking woman. The average looking woman is how he refers to his wife. I married the average looking woman because I was not obsessively attracted to her. It's always good to go with someone who, if the more the better. I mean, what you want ideally is someone who's this very sight of who makes you vomit immediately. 
I was tired of being ruled by my desire. <laughs> Eventually, inevitably, I hungered for more. I fell in love with a beautiful, insecure young woman who exploited my idealisation. Yeah, she exploited you. The insecure, beautiful young woman exploited you. I divorced my wife and lived, lived with this woman for six years. For a long time, she infatuated me. My love was totally giving in the hope of securing her love. For six years! There comes a point, mate. I missed the opportunity to have a normal family. Thank God! I have only one son from my first marriage. So that's not a normal family. Okay, that may... So not only have you just destroyed the self-esteem and self-confidence of your first wife, but also also your second... The, the woman you were lusting after and your, your child. The social engineers scored a victory for me. How? You got married, you had a kid. That's it. That's the game, innit? In normal heterosexuality, sex is reserved for courtship and procreation and the procreation stage. Oh, you fucking romantic. You, how did you manage to... You, how did you pull a dead tooth out of a fucking... Rotten horse's head. With parenthood, sex becomes less important. Mm. Is that what they told? She told you. Mm. Thanks to porn, we have been re-engineered to behave like homosexuals. Yes, this is the world we live in now, folks. You're married to. You're a man married to a woman. You've got children. You live together. And wanting to have sex with each other on a regular basis for fun is really fucking gay. Instead of families, we have sex. You know you can have both. In fact, the more you have of the second one, the more likely the first one is. Sex from cradle to grave. Uh, no. Mm, definitely not. In fact, there are, if there are two places... You should definitely never be caught having any of that. It's the fucking cradle or the grave. The habit of grading females in terms of sex appeal is hard to break. I love how you you just you're trying to blame someone else, something else, for your own your own misogyny. The fact that you need a woman to look up to you. Because that's what this is about, isn't it? There is something exhilarating about the lithe, beautiful woman in the prime of life. Yes, mate, it's called being sexy. Get used to it. I rationalise that my DNA is clamouring for a new vehicle, but I am too old to become a father again. Well, then don't! Maybe DNA is our real identity, and our lives are mere ripples of, on the waters of eternity. Beauty is just skin deep. Women, like men, are flawed human beings, struggling for a breath of fresh air in our toxic culture. Well, that was a fucking barrel of laughs. It cheered me up no end. Hope you enjoyed that, folks. Um, see you later.